Hello and today I'm going to talk to you about Google Fusion Tables which is a tool that sounds far more intimidating than it actually is especially in its experimental stage now state now it's uh, it's much easier to use than it's previously been and fairly intuitive and with a few clicks you can basically get some basic data ju journalism done without technical knowledge and without having to get too your hands dirty with code without having to get too into the to the nitty gritty of the data so essentially data journalism is about taking big piles of data and re handling them and representing them put, publishing them in a way that's much more engaging for users so fusion tables allows you to do that and the good thing is that it solves one big problem of data journalism and that is getting your hands on data the, you can obviously set up your own data spreadsheets where you can input things manually which can be laborious and uh, kind of difficult um, but the, there are a few shortcuts now through, through Fusion Tables which are ideal to get you started. So to find Google Fusion Tables, the easiest thing to do is just Google it, obviously. Um, and once you're on there, you'll, you can create a new table. Um, you'll be asked to log in if you haven't already. So you'll need like a Gmail account or a Yahoo account or, or something similar, which I hope increasingly you've all got anyway through other activities. Uh, so if you click Create a New Table, you get presented with the options here that are really around um, have you got data or do you need us to help you find some so this you can pull in uh, data from your uh, machine through Google spreadsheets for instance which are effectively Excel style tables so you're just looking at a list of uh, a list of, of information that you can handle and, 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 and put out in interesting ways or you can search public data tables. Searching public data tables is just about getting a hold of tables that are out online by keyword. So I'm going to search for something fairly obvious like Sunderland and using Google search it will look at various websites and see if people got uh, got tables on there that match my criteria. Like any process that involves search online there's going to be a certain amount of, uh, of, of, of kind of user filtering you're going to have to check and see whether it looks interesting appropriate or what have you um, each result will give you an opportunity say for example this interesting looking cup history of Sunderland football club it gives you an option to just get a little sample of the information so i can click the show more button and see a little get a flavor of what this data is it's about obviously about what competition the round uh, that the, the club reached presumably score and what have you. So if I'm, I'm happy that that's interesting enough, I can click import data, import to fusion tables. You don't have to have set anything up prior to this, just a Google uh, login. So once you've done that, click see table and it'll open up the data in, as I say, what looks essentially like an Excel spreadsheet in your Google Drive. So um, you can see here that it's loaded up. There are uh, 229 rows of information and they're categorized by these columns as you would with any table season competition etc etc and at this point in any data journalism if you're if you're getting hold of information from elsewhere you are going to have to sort of tidy it up a little bit so you can see this this line here is um, obviously content that's in the wrong place so if, I, if I've kind of clicked on that row I can clear it up by just going to edit and then delete selected row and that's okay and you can go through and I'm not going to clean it this data up um, completely just because I want to show you how relatively easy this is to do one thing to notice about this content and one of the reasons why I kind of subconsciously probably chose it is that it's a very mappable which is obviously a made-up word but it, it's a very mappable piece of uh, information you know that this is showing where Sunderland played so you can see the home team for each game so in many cases it's going to be Sunderland obviously but then there's other games played elsewhere so the handily Google Fusion Tables gives you an option to map and it's chosen this um, the, the home field which I'm happy with I can click that and it's now going to match the, um, the place names against coordinates on Google Maps so this will take probably a couple of minutes. When it's done, it appears to hang for a little sort of few seconds. So be patient with it. It, it might just be that it's um, that it's just kind of loading through the, the the process. So I'll pause for a second. Okay, that's done now. So it's automatically panning out the camera on the map 
to show me a view where I can see all of the points that have been plotted on there. So you get a picture of, it's including cup games that obviously are in preseason friendlies and what have you. So you've got some United games in the United States, games in Lisbon in Portugal, one of the, the many tours um, Sutherland have done over there, or the few tours they've done over there. Um, somewhere in Northern Italy, which is making me want to go on holiday. Um, but I'm going to zoom in on the UK because that's the area of densest kind of um, activity. Start to get a flavour of, of where these games have been played. Obviously Dublin with the, the, the Roy Keane era kind of connection over over there. Um, and what, what this does, it creates a map based on that field, but it also pulls through all the other information on that row uh, in the data table. So for example, let's click this button that appears to be Newcastle, which it is. Now, as well as pulling through the location of Newcastle, it's giving me the season that the game was played in, 1901-02, the competition, which was the FA Cup, the round reached, date, etc. And of course, most importantly, the result, which appears to have been, not surprisingly, a home win for Newcastle 1-0. So, at this point, we've got some quite interesting information, and rather than it being a table, it kind of gives it a slightly different, a slightly different more visual kind of uh, picture. And as I say, Google Fusion Tables can be used to kind of, to in far greater depth than, than we're using it here, just to kind of get started. You can create heat maps of uh, activity by kind of location. You can create tables that are interactive so people can drill down into that data and really get a, a sense of the, the, the content that's useful, most useful, most interesting, most relevant to them. Uh, once you get to this stage... It's likely with any, again, with any data journalism process, you're going to probably clean this data up and have a check of the, the points that have been plotted. Are there any errors, anything that shouldn't be there? And you can go back in to the to edit the rows in the uh, original table and, and make changes. Um, but it, once you're happy with it, you can share the content with a share button, which allows you to send it via email, post a tweet or what have you. Um, but probably the, the most useful uh, purpose of this for, for us as journalists is through the tools menu we can publish the content. So yeah, we can still send a link, uh, which is handy, um, as I'll explain in a second, for WordPress.com hosted blogs. But for other websites, we can also paste the code into a site so it becomes an element on the, on the site that is, uh, that is interactive. Hello, I'm ready for my close-up. And uh, one issue with Google Fusion Tables that you're going to encounter is that WordPress.com hosted blogs won't accept the embed code that you pump out from the Fusion Table. So you won't be able to put maps directly on a WordPress.com hosted blog. You can put a link to it. You can take a screenshot, put a link to it, which is not ideal. But there are other routes to publish this work that you'll be doing. And we'll talk a little bit about them in the class.